tell me. Do you bleed? You will. Everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice. And just on a quick side note, I am wearing my Batman and Superman shirt while reviewing this movie. You won't be able to see it during the review, but yes, I am actually wearing this shirt, and man. Ah, it's still one of my favorite shirts. So Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is directed by Zack Snyder. The film stars Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Amy Adams, Lawrence Fishburne, Diane Lane, Jesse Eisenberg, Gal Gadot, and Jeremy Irons. So Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is about when everyone in Metropolis is questioning Superman after what happened at the end of Man of Steel when Superman was facing Zod. After the events of what happened at the end of Man of Steel, you know, everyone is wondering what kind of person Superman is, whether is he a hero, is he a false god, and then Superman does start something very personal with Bruce Wayne without getting into any spoilers. Now Batman and Superman get on to this big war. Then we have Lex Luthor who is up to something very diabolical, which I will not spoil in case you haven't seen that one trailer. So when I went to this movie, I was very, very pumped for this movie. It is one of my most anticipated movies of 2016. When I made my video for our top 10 most anticipated movies of 2016, I put this movie as my number five. That's how excited I was for this movie. Also, I am a huge fan of Man of Steel. I know that's a very controversial comic book movie. Some people hate it, love it, like it, or in the mech level. I do think it's one of the greatest comic book movies ever made. That's how much I love this movie. And I will definitely say, after seeing Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, I was not disappointed by this film. Now, as far as the performances go, Henry Cavill is still great as Superman. He still embodies Superman so well. He is Superman at this point. He was great in Man of Steel, and he continues that greatness here in Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. He was really great. Amy Adams, she's still great as Lois Lane. Like I said, saying what I said with Henry Cavill, she was great in Man of Steel, and she was still great here. And I really did like the purpose that she served with Superman without going to any details. I just really liked how they did her character. Lawrence Fishburne is still great as Perry White. Really like him a lot. Diane Lane is still great as Martha Kent. Jeremy Irons was flat out fantastic as Alfred. I thought he did a really great job with his character. And I thought for what he had, he made his character very engaging whenever he was on screen. Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. I was very worried about him going into this film. He was definitely my biggest worry. And I will honestly just say this. I was actually surprised with how great his performances was. Not, not that I was doubting Jesse because I've always thought he was a great actor. But I was impressed by how insane and twitchy, I guess you could say, his character is. I thought he handled it so well. Some people I know are going to have criticisms regarding that, but I personally, for me, it did really work, and I was actually really just genuinely surprised on how he portrayed Lex Luthor. I still don't buy him as Lex Luthor, but as far as performances go, it was still a very great and very convincing performance. Gal Gadot kills it as Wonder Woman, for sure. She was just awesome. Not in this film a whole lot, but whenever she is in this film, she was honestly really great. And man, when Wonder Woman makes her entrance, when you see her for the first time in this movie, it was awesome. She really embodied Wonder Woman. She was badass. But of course, I know the one you guys want me to really talk about is Ben Affleck as Batman. And all I'm going to say is, holy crap. 
he was excellent in this film. He was just an awesome Batman. Definitely a darker Batman and definitely a different on-screen Batman, which was really cool. Now, I know you guys are going to ask me, as far as the modern Batman movies go, which modern Batman on-screen portrayal was better, Christian Bale's or Ben Affleck's? Personally, I don't want to compare because both of their interpretations of Batman are different and I feel like both actors embody their characters as both Bruce Wayne and Batman for their own right. I love Christian Bell for different reasons as Batman and I love Ben Affleck for different reasons as Batman. But yeah, Ben Affleck as Batman was just utterly awesome. And the action sequences in this movie looked spectacular. The action sequences were just intense. They put you on this thrill ride, especially when it came to the final 30 to 40 minutes of the movie. I was always so engrossed by the action sequences. It was just so exciting and so awesome. Yes, Superman and Batman's fight was so awesome to watch as well. It was very intense, especially with the sound mixing, which was really great in this film. Superman punching Batman or Batman punching Superman. You just can't help but go, oh, oh, man, because it just sounded so real whenever the two of them are clashing against each other. The cinematography for the film looks great. I think it's very well lit. It's very well shot. Zack Snyder's direction was absolutely brilliant here. It was very captivating. His direction really helped me get immersed into this world, especially when it comes to the action sequences. The score by Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL is absolutely brilliant. It sounds so beautiful for this film film because I loved Hans Zimmer's score in the first Man of Steel. Like that's just one of the best scores I've ever heard in the movie. So it's cool to see Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL collab and just bring their brilliant work of composing music together and it flows so well with Donna Justice. The script in this movie is very well written. It does a great job of making you get behind the characters, like you can truly get behind Batman, understand why he is so pissed off. You can also really get behind Superman and sympathize with him because a lot of the people are really doubting Superman and even Superman is having doubts for himself. This movie flew by for me like nothing. By the time this movie ended, I was like, wow, that did not even feel like it was two hours and 30 minutes. And that's always a great thing when a movie has a long running time, but you never really feel that long running time. Now, Batman v Superman does have some problems. And some of those problems for me is just that this film in a few parts, while this is a visually spectacular film, and I do mean that this is a gorgeous looking movie with its visuals. However, in just a few scenes, I do feel like the visuals didn't look that good just in a few spots. Superman, I did feel like was just a bit underused in this film, and I do really mean bit, because Superman still gets a lot of screen time, and Batman gets a lot of screen time, but I would say out of these two heroes, Batman does get a little more screen time. I mean, there's a reason that you see Ben Affleck listed first, and then Henry Cavill second, because, you know, Batman, he does feel like he's a bit more focused. And I know that they probably did that because they already have him out of the way with his origin and Man of Steel. I think he just could have been in the movie just slightly more. How the movie does end felt unnecessary. And that's honestly all I'm going to say because I really don't want to spoil anything about this movie. Some of the cinematography in this film and some scenes, I do think the color schemes did look really out of place. There were just some scenes in the cinematography where it just could have looked better. Maybe the lighting looked off. Maybe the color schemes, it wasn't all that great. And I just thought cinematography wise, oh, most of it is beautiful to look at. Some of the shots could have looked better. Some of the editing does get sloppy. How the movie moves along to the next plot point and how the movie just edits a certain scene, it does look really sloppy at times. And I will say the story structure 
it does get a little bit messy. Now, I'm not saying it's bad because technically I was still engaged throughout this movie. Like, I was still engaged by what was happening. I was still engaged with the characters and where the storyline is moving. All of that still had me invested. But with all that being said, this film does try to cram in too many things going on at once. It just feels a little bit rushed. It gets a little bit messy. Overall, guys, Batman v Superman, Donna Justice, sure, it does have its problems. However, I was very satisfied walking out of this movie. I was not disappointed. Yes, it has problems, but the problems I have don't really ruin how much I enjoyed this movie. It was so cool to see Batman and Superman on screen for the first time ever. Henry Cavill is still great as Superman, and Ben Affleck is fantastic as Batman. Despite the plot structure for most of the movie being a little incoherent, I was still really invested for what was going on. I was never bored once. I was always interested in what was going to happen next. The movie has an awesome score. The movie has epic action sequences. And the movie does do little nods to Justice League, which I also thought was really awesome. Gal Gadot really killed it as Wonder Woman, and Jeremy Irons really killed it as Alfred. So Batman and Superman, I'm going to give your movie three out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. And also, I do want to point something out. People are really getting worried about this movie because of the percentage it has on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, as I'm filming this review, it is... 4.20 in the morning. Yes, I'm actually filming this review at 4.20 a.m. The score could be higher or lower by the time I have this up. But I do want to say I'm noticing a lot of people really panicking about this. And I just want to say this. Please do not listen to Rotten Tomatoes. Please just go into a movie with your own judgment. How you should look at Rotten Tomatoes is just look at how people feel about a movie. Don't look at Rotten Tomatoes as, oh, this is a good movie, so that's good. Oh, this movie got a bad rating, so it must be a bad movie. Because film is very subjective. And that goes to every movie, not just this movie, but every movie that comes out. Every movie you should always try to go in with an open mind. Don't have Rotten Tomatoes just give you an opinion. You yourself, as the movie lover or casual movie goer, form your own opinion. It should be like that, not only with Batman v Superman, Donna Justice, but for every movie. I normally don't like to mention this kind of stuff ever, honestly, but I feel like it was necessary because I saw how much people were panicking regarding this, and I really didn't want to see that. I just want people to go into this movie with their own open minds and form their own opinions. So this is Tony, aka 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!